What's up, Gemini gang? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name's Annie. We're going to read your tarot cards here today. This will be a general love and relationships reading for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Please come into the reading with an open heart, an open mind, a desire to learn something to better yourself. Um, I'm tapping into whatever energies you all are sharing with me out there. But that being said, if the uh, messages that come through don't resonate for you, feel free to push them aside. Um, they might not be your message this week, or they may make sense to you later uh, in the future. So again, be open to that. Maybe revisit them at a later date. You are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Let's try and get Gemini some, some helpful messages here regarding their love and relationships. All right, I guess we're going to start here because I turned them over. <laughs> um, probably for, for the best, for, for a reason anyway. So new moon in Virgo. Interesting. We actually have a full moon in Virgo coming up. I believe it is, I have to be honest, guys, I don't know the exact date. Usually I'm good about that, but my life has been insane. So there's a full moon in Virgo, I think around the 18th or 19th of March. Look it up for sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, but in theory, something is coming to a culmination um, that you may have started six months ago at the new moon in Virgo, right? Um so what were you doing six months ago? It might be good to revisit that. And I mean, I have a feeling this may have to do with a relationship in your life. Um, something may come to the surface again. Uh, you know, with the full moon, it's going to be very uh, visible and, and lit up, right? Um, so you may be able to see something that, that wasn't clear to you before. You may have some sort of epiphany or some sort of clarity regarding something that maybe was wishy-washy or hazy or something that you planted seeds for may come to fruition, right? It could be that you were dating at the time and, you know, six months later, it's become an exclusive thing. And maybe, you know, with moon symbolizing, you know, female, family, mother, the home, maybe it's, uh, maybe you guys are moving in together, right? Could be something like that. Nothing is set in stone. So the mutable moon. So something is changeable here. So let's pull some tarot. Let's include some tarot here. <clears throat> Yeah, I think something may come to the surface that you're not anticipating or expecting. Um, again, there, there, there might, especially if you are a Gemini rising, uh, there might be something to do with a, a change up in the home or the living space. Um, And some of you, I don't know, I'm almost getting this more as an intuitive message. Something didn't come to pass that you were hoping for, but I think this is saying it's not over yet. Uh, so again, something is going to be more visible around that, that full moon. Um, yeah, it, it's like... <laughs> It's like the writing is not on the wall. You think it is. This may involve a cancer, something to do with a mother, or, or again, something about changing of the home or moving moving the home. A time to give rather than to take. Who and what are you of service to? What does this have to do with Gemini's love life? Let's see. The wish fulfillment. Yeah, okay. Your wish fulfillment is temporarily blocked because it's transforming in a way that you didn't anticipate. Um, it's Pisces season, so rather than going off of that very Mercury kind of logic, data, details, analysis, which is very Virgo too, uh, this is about doing the opposite. This is about immersing yourself in sort of that Piscean water that it, it, it echoes, it vibrates, it, it absorbs, right? It's something kind of mystical and surreal and magical even, right? Um, open up your intuition to receive messages from the divine because th th there is communication there if you seek it, but it's, it's again, it's not written, it's not set in stone. It, it's not written on the wall. It's these, these answers are kind of vague. I mean, even this tarot message is kind of vague to me right now. Um, some of you put someone up on a pedestal and the universe blocked you from it because it wasn't a good match for you. You're going to see in time that this was for the best. Um, because you yourself has, have gone through some uh, tremendous changes. You're starting to see things from a new perspective. And okay, you're, some of you are starting to be thankful that something didn't work out. Because it's going to lead you to a better match or a better pair or, or, you know, quote unquote, who you're meant to be with. I don't even love that because something about this mutable moon, it's like, well, meant to be with, you know, you have a choice in that. You have agency, right? You have free will. Um, this not working out, though, is aligning you to match up with someone who at minimum is compatible. Yes, it can be friendship. It can, it can be stripped of romance. But I am reading for romance. And so 
Yeah, some of you may have a Virgo presenting in your life in, in the coming months or the coming weeks even. This is a blessing in disguise. Rejection is divine protection. You bet your ass. That's what I get from this. And again, there's something about, I understand this is saying new moon and Virgo, but six months ago, who were you dating? Who were you crushing on? Who were you engaged to? You know, whatever, whatever that was six months ago, there's something coming to a culmination. And again, there's an element of surprise and mystery here. I don't, uh, actually, that does make sense. Uh, planet Uranus, right? The planet of shock, rebellion, unexpected change, right? The, the awakener planet is sitting in your 12th house of uh, things hidden from you, right? Uh, even uh, the, the mind, the psyche, the, the spiritual realm, something is coming into fruition that you don't necessarily see coming, but something that you wanted desperately you're going to you're going to be like, oh, thank goodness that didn't happen. And, and I know that sounds a little far fetched to some of you right now, because, again, it's Piscean. It, it, it's not logical um, and it's not. <laughs> you're going to have to trust the universe on this one, Gemini. Yeah, a new offer, a new date. Oh, look, and there's the Wheel of Fortune. You're welcome. <laughs> no, that sounded arrogant. I'm just kidding. What I mean by this, though, is that you're going to be happy something didn't turn out the way you had hoped because it actually is opening you up and changing your, your mind, having a broader perspective of things that are trying to come in for you that just quite frankly, this looks fantastic. Why wouldn't you want this? Um, I don't know the reasons why this didn't come in. It, at one point in time, it was a wish fulfillment, but there was stubborn energy on someone else's part, and it just... It's probably, it's possible the quote unquote wounded warrior card, right? The nine of wands. This person may have had some baggage that they weren't dealing with. And so they were throwing themselves into the dating world to distract from their problems. And really, you know, you ended up catching feelings and they didn't even love themselves. Like, you know, more often than not, that's, that's what's going on here, right? So this person may have put up a wall. They may have blocked you. They may have just left you, you know, on red or in the dark. And, and I think for the longest time you were like pining after them, but this is saying, no, 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 the universe did you a favor because get ready for this, baby. <laughs> get ready for this. Anything else? Um, Wheel of Fortune, uh, Jupiter energy, right? So expansion, uh, travel, you could meet someone in your travels, especially overseas, interna um, internationally, is that the right word? Um, and someone possibly foreign to you, of a foreign background, a foreign ethnicity, of a foreign you know religion, something that is different, and it broadens your mind. It opens you up to um, to build with someone who maybe you wouldn't have necessarily considered before. Uh, possibly Sagittarius or Pisces energy here. Um, and this person's a hard worker. This person has their shit together. There's an element of uh, fun here, but there's also an element of maturity and wanting to make the relationship work. Very solid energy here. All right, that's one message. Um, and again, don't get hung up on the zodiac signs. It can be literally any zodiac sign. Um, but yeah, it, 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 there's change coming through. Mutable moon. Nothing is set in stone yet. So, all right, let's talk about this one. Luck is on your side. New moon in Sagittarius. Actually, we're going to do, going to change up the deck. We're going to do this one. All right. What do I need to tell my Geminis about this? So there could be a new Sagittarius coming into your life. Someone aiming at you. Let's see. I'm hearing like take aim, like get ready, get ready. Luck is on your side. All right, for Gemini, what wants to come through? Gemini's in love relationships, seven of cups. All right, so an offer is made, but you're not sure how to feel about it yet. Or you gave your heart to someone, but you, you feel confused about their reaction. Tell me a little bit more about that. Some of you are worried to, to let your guard down, to be vulnerable and sensitive, to, uh, to, to open your heart up to someone. Five of Wands. Yeah, it's, you're, you're conflicted about it. The feelings are there, but you're, you're conflicted. You're, you're leaning into that earth energy, which is more stripped of the emotional capacity. <clears throat> what is with that? Because some of you are sick and tired of feeling like you're in competition for someone's affection. And good for you. You shouldn't have to feel that way, right? <laughs> if that person likes and respects you, they're, you know, they're going to communicate with you. You don't have to carry the burden of hoping and, and guessing and wishing that, that they're going to come around here. We have to remember, though, like this has a positive spin to it, though. Luck is on your side. I almost feel like it's sort of a repeat message of what we already said. But I'm going to see what else I can get from this because maybe there's, maybe there's something I missed. Let's see. A lot of you just lack self-confidence. Um, a lot of you are attracted to people who are very confident. Um, and ultimately, the message here is that, you know, 
really it's like you're you're trying to date the quality you want to express in yourself so this is just simply a message saying that you know gemini lean into your confidence build your confidence um how, how you do that I, I don't really have the answer for you um i guess you have to put yourself out there you have to try some things and i would say king of wands you can't be afraid to fail try try again right you know she's she's climbing up the hill she's she's got her hands full it looks exhausting but she's gonna get there because she's determined because she knows she wants to right he or she whatever <clears throat> <sighs> yeah, some of you need to focus on mastering the skills in yourself that you seek in partnership, in, in your dating life and relationships. People who are fill in the blank that you're like, oh my God, I'm so attracted to people when they are X, Y, and Z. Those are the things you need to find in yourself, right? It's about loving yourself first and then you're going to attract people who are on that level with you. But there's something about an imbalance in, in here. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like you're stroking this person's ego, but they're not able to give back to you because you don't accept it. You don't accept their love because you don't think you deserve it. And I don't even think this is happening on a conscious level. I think this is like deep, deep seated stuff. But you're taking aim at something new. Um, we have to remember at a new moon, right? Uh, the, the sun is eclipsed by the moon, so there's you know barely any light showing. So you're kind of in the dark. It's more you have to go on instincts and feelings that there is something out there. And I, like I want to plant the seeds, but I'm not quite ready to because I don't I don't totally know. Good. <laughs> While you're in the dark, I almost think it's about spending time with yourself and kind of sorting through some. I don't want to call it baggage, but you know what I mean. Sorting through some deep stuff um, so that you can release what's no longer needed. Um, you're giving yourself every advantage and opportunity to move forward in new love um, and, and manifest this king of wands if that's what you're looking for. <clears throat> some of you have many romantic options. Some of you have like two, three, maybe four people who are interested, but you're rejecting them all. Um, or you've had many matches or many connections, but it's like you're lost in confusion of which, which one to choose. And you're, I don't know why, but it's like, you're making it harder on yourself. Once you realize you can drop these and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't get this message a lot, but it's, it's not because of my own feelings or, or whatever. This is entirely your message. So do with it as you will. Some of you, it's like, you're looking for the one where you just need to be out there dating and meeting people and connecting and not putting so much heavy expectation of, you know, some of you, it's like you go in looking for reasons why it's going to fail or why you can't muster the courage to pull through or why you can't ask for what you need. And it's so burdensome, but you're also kind of lonely. So then you keep doing it. Some of you, it's like, to me, it's saying, even if you're not a Gemini who's like, I don't have options. I don't know what you're talking about. You could. I, I feel like this is representative of people reaching out to you, you know, one, two, three, four people who are like, hey, Gemini. And you're just like, I, I can't hold on to it. It's too much. It's too, because you have a lot of feelings. You have a lot of, but it's like they're repressed feelings. I also think this card is indicative of many people looking at you you know you're catching eyes people are you know you're grabbing their attention they're interested they're curious they want to meet you they want to talk to you but then this is you though you're like very indecisive and i don't know who to build with and again anytime there's panicles it does come down to values and self-worth issues right what is this this burden this load that you're carrying with you and, and why do you feel like it has to be that way this is trying to open up your mind, Sagittarian energy, to see a higher perspective, right? To expand out of your comfortable limits, to um, maybe step out of a narrow perspective of what this person needs to look like or, or what, what they need to do for work or, yeah, I mean, King of Wands energy, it's fire, it's passionate, but it, it's not really concerned about the, the minor details. It's like, is there a connection here? All right, well, let's start with that. Um, some of you are investing too much in, in the little things that don't really matter. Um, you know, oh, they have terrible taste in music. Gemini, that doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I'm just putting it. Yes, it's great to meet someone who loves the, your favorite band. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You know, they can listen to opera and you can listen to fucking pop songs. It doesn't matter. It's about the connection and the feeling and the energy. That's my major message here. You're going to start to open up your mind and realize that it's not about those narrow details. That at what point in time you were... You were blocking yourself. You were limiting your options because you, I, I don't know if, if it, it was pressure from those around you or feeling like you, 
I don't know. I'm hearing square peg in a round hole, but I don't know how that. But I do, though. It's I, I don't know what this is symbolic of. Like, I'm trying to put it in, into to vocabulary that, we, that you would understand. But it's like you're trying to fit this giant round pentacle in this tiny, narrow cup, and it doesn't fit. But you're like, this is what my romantic partner looks like. This is what they are and who they are and what they like and how they treat me. But it's not fitting in these. So it, it's like those two are not compatible is what I'm trying to say. You're holding on to something and trying to, again, square peg round hole. For some reason or another, the universe is trying to direct you elsewhere. Luck is on your side. The universe is doing you a favor here, but you're not getting the message. You're blocking yourself. I, I'm going to say it in this specific reading, Gemini, and I, I love you and I support you guys. You're your own worst enemy because you're making this harder on yourself. You're doing all this, it might not be physical labor, though for some of you it is, but this like emotional labor of holding on to something that you don't need. You never needed it. Like this wasn't the one. There's so many, I hate this to be cheesy, but like plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah, there, there really, really are. And one of them might, might just be your king of wands, whatever that means to you. And don't get caught up in the gender thing, right? That could easily be a female as well, but yeah. A very strong, um, a strong mate, a strong match, a strong friendship, a strong competitor. Um, someone who would be proud to, to have you with them and, and treat you like you deserve to be treated. Yeah, you got a decision to make. It's almost like you're not going to be able to truly immerse yourself in new chapters and new love and, and new relationships of any kind until you make a difficult decision to put down something that has been very burdensome to you in your love life. It may have to do with family baggage or, I hate to use that word, but you know what I mean, like holding on to issues about self-worth related to family matters or how your ex treated you or, or what that person told you that one time, you don't have to believe that anymore. Belief systems, that's a huge word with this kind of Sagittarian energy. What do you believe? What do you believe about love and relationships? What do you believe about yourself? Who do you believe in? Who believes in you? That's an important question here. Um, my biggest message to you is you have plenty of options. And if you're watching this going, I'm not seeing them. Well, yeah, because because this is all that you're seeing. You need to change your mind. You need to change your perspective. You need to get out of your own way. Whew, you do have a fire sign coming in if you if you choose to tango with them, so to say. Um, that was a hard one. Um, that sounded like a lot of tough love, and you're right, it was, but it comes from a good place. It comes from, you know, it's lucky, again, that, that certain things didn't work out because ultimately it's it's making room for what is meant to be, but the timeline of when that, that new relationship or that new connection comes in, it's entirely up to you, but you don't seem to want to let something go. So, I, I, you know, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> all right, hold your vision, fixed moon. There's that word, uh, or no, I'm sorry, vision. I said belief. Vision is also associated with uh, Sagittarius. All right, tell me about this. So maybe some fixed energy. <clears throat> Holding on to your value system. Let's see. Ooh, with a Leo, maybe. But there might be a Leo who's holding on to you. Let's see. Messages from your angel gang, your, your spiritual guidance, your, uh, you know, God, whatever you believe in, source, spirit, universe. <clears throat> I'm getting a couple messages from this. Hold on. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> Release control of the things that are that are out of your control, quite frankly. Um, it's a little bit redundant. Okay, that came out in reverse, but I guess my deck is in reverse. Some of you wrote somebody off as a liar, cheater, thief, but really there, there was a lack of communication and a lack of understanding. Some of you jumped the gun um, because of, again, uh, past wounds or trauma or trust issues. That's what it is. Some of you have past trust issues, and so you very quickly were uh, dismissing someone who actually had good intentions. They were pure of heart, but you wrote them off as... Uh, dishonest or lying to you but again and this won't be for all of you but there was a misunderstanding there it, it wasn't what you thought it was someone may have lost someone in their life and that's why they went dark on you they weren't in a place where they were able to communicate um what they were feeling because the feelings were so overwhelming they were going through a period of healing and, you know, rightfully so, they weren't ready to date. You know, ideally, yes, it would have been great if they had communicated all that to you, but they just weren't able to. Um, 
Part of this too, Gemini, has to do with giving people the benefit of the doubt that we are all human and we are all flawed and we're not perfect and we're all just doing the best we can and figuring things out. So uh, forgiveness is actually going to be quite important to you here. Practicing forgiveness. Yeah, double Leo energy. Yeah, you have, may have had a Sag who fell off the radar. Um, what is he shining his light on? They were they were on a, a spiritual quest. They were soul searching. And, you know, they might not call it that, but more or less that, that was their path at the time. And so yeah, there was a miscommunication or, a, again, I'm hearing you quick to judge. You're very quick to judge them on something. You've had Sagittarius energy coming through in all three of these readings, Gemini. Yeah, this person was grieving. They were going through great loss. They may have been going through a really rough bout of, of depression, having anxiety, insomnia, sleepless nights. Again, mourning the loss of someone very important in their life, particularly a, a grandparent. Um, and that's why communication may have been blocked. Um, see the truth is what I'm, I'm being told to tell you here. It's like your your heart knows the truth, but your mind is playing tricks on you. Your mind, it's like this fast little computer and like, um, <laughs> I'm getting something about like surges. It's just like, do, 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 do. It's, it's all over the place. And it's, it's coming up with these wild scenarios and these imaginary plot lines of what was going on. And I think it's saying quiet your mind and listen to your heart. Um, it's not to say you have to take this person back if that that's what's there. But to be honest, I think there could actually be a very strong connection here with a Sagittarius or a Leo. <clears throat> Is there a Virgo here? What's the vibe with the Virgo? The Virgo might be married or going through a, a um, divorce or or they're, I'm getting like they're cut off from family. So again, there might be a sense of loss or mourning or just quite frankly, like missing, missing the family. Uh, I, I don't know what the scenario is there, but it could be, I don't know this. It could be a, hold on. Yeah, the Virgo, if there is a Virgo involved, they're having a financial struggles right now. The Virgos having issues with their mother as well, and in terms of a domineering, possessive, controlling mother, um, there's a break away from that. There's an independence, but with that, there's an adjustment of finances or, or figuring things out on their own or not relying on the family. Or and it might be financially, but it might be in another capacity. The, the Virgo is going through a huge uh, process of change. Um, Yeah, the Sagittarius is coming back around again for most of you. And I mean, again, these are general readings, so be open to it, but it doesn't mean it's going to manifest for all of you. There's something, and this is particularly what's important. The Sagittarius that you wrote off because you were cursing their name and how could they and blah, 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 and I gave them my heart and they broke it. There is more to be revealed here. Um, and again, you have agency, you have free will. There's, there's, some offer or explanation coming through to Gemini about what came in between you guys. And maybe it's not, hey, I want to date you again, or, you know, here's my heart, I want to love you. Maybe it's just simply, I don't know, it's something tangible, it's something real, authentic, solid, it's something they've been working on behind, behind the scenes here. And it might be that they've been working on themselves, so for some of you, it could be an apology. It could be, you know, mending fences or, or breaking bread or a peace offering of some kind. The, the Sag thing was, was gravely misunderstood. Um, practice patience with this person because, again, they were going through something you didn't really understand. And I think, I don't know, I'm not saying you're going to get total and utter clarity. Sometimes in life we don't get that. But sometimes you get lucky, <clears throat> and you do. Um, so, yeah, there, there's emotions that are going to be revealed here and, and issues and matters about healing. And, um, yeah, okay. And then last but not least, let's, let's do this one. The Leo may be having childcare issues. The Leo may be having baby mama issues. The Leo may just be very lighthearted, and then you may have viewed them as very immature or not having their shit together. Um, I don't. I don't think that's true, though. Okay, a lot of you wrote off the connection with the Leo as purely physical. Um, but again, that wasn't true. It was just how the relationship started. This almost seems like it started off kind of hot and heavy. Um, and I don't, I think it was just too much too soon, maybe. <clears throat> I 
I do sense that this person may have been married at one time or in a very long-term commitment. So it's possible you met them out of that long-term commitment and they weren't looking for anything serious. And then it came with you, Gemini. And then they were just like, oh, okay, well, this kind of, cha it changed their vision, um, which is really funny because that says hold your vision. I think this person was looking for something casual, something non-committal, um, but ultimately that's that's not necessarily what was written in the stars. <laughs> you have a lot of major arcana here, so there's some, I mean, these are all major arcana, quite frankly, so this is big. Double Leo, you have Aquarius, so there's that polarity, and then you have the Hierophant, which is Taurus energy. Um, so again, something unexpected that was written in the stars. Uranus, Uranus, however you want to say it. Uranus, planet Uranus is sitting in Taurus, which is your 12th house. Unexpected changes. We talked about that, right? Um, Gemini rising. You are, let's see, Aquarius in the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Ninth house. So where is... Leo's in your third. Is that right? Gosh, I don't know what this is. There's so many major arcana. What is the thing that connects these four? Thank you. Thinking about the past, um, communicating things with more clarity than you had previously. I mean, here's the thing. These are bright and illuminated, right? At one point in time, it was just a star in the sky. It was like a small flicker. There was a lack of clarity, but there was like a feeling. There was a spark. Here it's big and illuminated, so something changes and it becomes greater. Greater commitment, maybe, with the Hierophant. Um, somebody who was once questioning something seems to be certain of something before. This could have also been a false start as well. Um, or uh, Here's what I'm getting at. Someone who got cold feet, it could be that you guys were... I, this message has come up so much, I think, in almost every Zodiac reading. There could have been someone who it's like you had been together and it seemed like the natural step to whatever, move in together, get engaged, ba da ba ba, you know, have kids and, and, you know, whatever that you consider that in your timeline, right? That's open to every individual's perspective. It seems like someone got cold feet and they pulled back and that was the source or the origin of, of some arguments and some, well, I thought you loved me and but but like it got really complicated simply because someone was confused about the next steps. So there could be a revival. There could be some light shed on something where you start to understand this person's perspective in a different way. And there might be, um, someone might change their mind, but I think in a way that uh, it does benefit you. Someone may have gotten cold feet about marriage, and at the time that could have been very heartbreaking to you, but then ultimately it was a blessing in disguise because you're going to meet someone who does have that same vision that you have of your future, if you want marriage, and not all of you do. Others of you, it's the opposite. It's that you weren't necessarily a person who needs marriage and, you know, the legal contract, the binding contract in a relationship. You, maybe you are not a person who likes titles and, and being put in a certain box. And maybe you connected with someone who needed that for their own security, for their own peace of mind. Um, in which case, you may realize that in, in the long term, you're actually not a good pair together. So there could be an ending and, and a period of healing. Um, but I would say that there's something new coming in that's going to make you very happy. Um, be very cognizant of someone who tries to get you to change who you are and, and change your mind on things that are, that are very important to you when it comes down to just basic, basic issues of value and self-worth and honoring yourself, loving yourself. There could be some manipulative energy here too. I don't know if it's a Leo or a Taurus or an Aquarius. It's so funny that you have the fixed moon and you have almost all the fixed signs coming out, except Scorpio. Um, but yeah, you, you definitely connected with someone who was stubborn in, in their way of thinking. Very old school, traditional ways of thinking. And, and what this, what I think for some of you, what you introduced was this sort of shake up, this innovative, well, maybe we don't have to follow the rules. Maybe we can do it a different way. And this person, oh, no, 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 no. Like I, you know what I mean? There, I don't know. But I, at the end of the day, I think this is saying there was, there's a, a push and pull. There's an opposition. There was a, a disagreement on, on certain things that were very important here. And I don't know. I, to be honest, I can see this going both ways. Let me throw one more on it. But Ultimately, honor yourself and your heart and what you need in a relationship. Hold your vision. Fixed moon. So queen of wands. Is the passion still there? Can you get the passion back? Are you still excited about the same things? Is this someone you want to go on adventures with? 
Um, <clears throat> they're charismatic as fuck. That's what I get. Like you, <laughs> there's parts of them that are very desirable, but you may have to. I sort of see this as you're going to be waiting a long time if you're getting into a relationship and trying to change someone's mind. That's a really, that's a big red flag when you're going into a relationship is, oh, I, like, I'm, I'm going to change their mind. You know, if I, if I preach long enough, eventually they'll, they'll submit to me. They'll follow my way of thinking. I don't see that happening. <laughs> I don't think it's saying give up on what you need and want. I think it's saying don't try and change people. Fixed, right? That's what I get from that. All right, Gemini, that's what I got for you. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what resonates, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye.